ngothola kanjani ingwa mabalabala In the days when everybody started fair, who best be loved? The leopard lived in a place called the High Veld. Remember, it wasn't the low belt or the bush belt or the sour belt, but the exclusively bare, hot, shiny high belt, where there was sand and sandy colored rock, exclusively tufts of sandy yellowish grass. The giraffe, and the zebra, and the elan, and the kudu, and the harabis lived. And they were exclusively sandy, yellow brown, all over. But the leopard, he was the exclusively yellowish brownish of them all, a grayish, yellowish, caddy-shaped kind of beast, and he matched the exclusively yellowish, grayish, brownish color of the high veld to one air. This is very bad, giraffe, and the zebra, and the rest of it. For he would lie down by exclusively yellowish, grayish, brownish stone or clump of grass. And when the giraffe or the zebra or the elan or the kudu or the bush buck or the bounty buck came by, he would surprise them out of their jumpsome lives. Oh, he would indeed. And also, there was an Ethiopian with bows and arrows. Exclusively grayish, brownish, yellowish man he was then, who lived on the high belt with the leopard. And the two used to hunt together. The Ethiopian with his bows and arrows, and the leopard exclusively with his teeth and claws. To the giraffe and the Eli and the kudu and the quagga, and all the rest of them didn't know which way to jump. They didn't indeed. After a long time, they learned to avoid anything that looked like a leopard or an Ethiopian. And bit by bit, they went away from the high veld. They scuttled for days, days and days till they came to a great forest. 
exclusively full of trees and bushes and stripy, speckly, patchy, blotchy shadows. And there they hid. And after another long time, what with standing half in the shade and half out of it, and what with the slippery, slidy shadows of the trees falling on them, the giraffe grew blotchy, and the zebra grew stripy, and the elan and the kudo grew dark with little wavy gray lines on their backs like bark on a tree trunk. And so, though you could hear them and smell them, you could very seldom see them. And then, only when you knew precisely what to do. They had a beautiful time in the exclusively speckly and spickly shadows of the forest. Well, the leopard and the Ethiopian ran about over the exclusively grayish, yellowish, reddish higher veld outside, wondering where all their breakfasts and their dinners and their teas had gone. At last, they were so hungry that they ate rats and beetles and rock rabbits, and they had a big tummy ache. Then, they met Bobby, who is quite the wisest animal in all South Africa. Said the leopard to Bavian, it was a very hot day. Where has all the game gone? And Bavian winked. He knew. Said the Ethiopian to Bavian, can you tell me the present habitat of the Aboriginal fauna? That meant just the same thing. Best beloved, but the Ethiopian always used long words. He was a grown up. And Bavian winked. He knew. Then said Bavian, The game has gone into other spots. And my advice to you, Leopard, is to go into other spots as soon as you can. And the Ethiopian said, that is all very fine, but I wish to know whither the aboriginal fauna has migrated. Then said Bavian, the aboriginal fauna has joined the aboriginal flora because it is high time for a change. And my advice to you, Ethiopian, is to change as soon as you can. That puzzled the leopard and the Ethiopian, but they set off to look for the aboriginal flora. And presently,
recently, after ever so many days, they saw great, high, tall forests full of tree trunks all exclusively speckled and sprottled and spottled, dotted and splashed and slashed and hashed and crossed hashed with shadows. Say that quickly aloud, and you will see how very shadowy the forest must have been. What is this? said the leopard. That is so exclusively dark and yet so full of little pieces of light. I don't know, said the Ethiopian but it ought to be the aboriginal fauna. I can smell giraffe, I can hear giraffe, but I can't see giraffe. Hmm, that's curious, said the leopard. I suppose it's because we have just come in out of the sunshine. I can smell zebra. I can hear zebra. But I can't see zebra. Uh, wait a bit, said the Ethiopian. It's a long time since we've hunted them. Perhaps we've forgotten what they were like. Fiddle, said the leopard. I remember them perfectly on the high world, especially their moral bones. <laughs> Giraffe is about 17 feet high, golden yellow from head to heel. Zebra is about four and a half feet high of exclusively gray fawn color. Mm, said the Ethiopian, looking into the speckly, spickly shadows of the aboriginal floral forest. Then they ought to show up in dark places like ripe bananas in a smokehouse. But they didn't. The leopard and the Ethiopia hung all day. And though they could smell them and hear them, they never saw one of them. For goodness sake, said the leopard at tea time, let us wait till it gets dark. This daylight hunting is a perfect scandal. So they waited to dark. Then the leopard heard something breathing stiffly in the starlight that felt all stripy through the branches, and he jumped at the noise. And he smelled like zebra, and it felt like zebra, and when he knocked it down, it kicked like zebra, but he couldn't see it, so he said, Be quiet, oh, you person without a form. I am going to sit on your head until morning, because there's something about you that I don't understand. Presently, he heard a grunt and a crash and a scramble, and the Ethiopian called out, I've caught a thing that I can't see. It smells like giraffe. It kicks like giraffe. But it hasn't any form. Don't trust it, said the leopard. Sit on its head till morning, same as me. They haven't any form, any of them. So they sat on them hard till bright morning time. And then the leopard said, What have you at your end of the table, brother? The Ethiopian scratched his head and said, It ought to be exclusively a rich, fulvous, orange tawny from head to heel, and it ought to be giraffe. 
but it is covered all over with chestnut blotches. What have you at your end of the table, brother? And the leopard scratched his head and he said, It ought to be exclusively a delicate grayish fawn. It ought to be zebra. But it is covered all over with black and purple stripes. What in the world have you been doing with yourself, zebra? Don't you know that if you were on the high belt, I could see you ten miles off? You haven't any form. Yes, said Zebra. But this isn't the high belt, can't you see? I can now, said the leopard. But I couldn't all yesterday. How is it done? Hmm. Let us up, said the Zebra. And we will show. They let the zebra and the giraffe get up. And the zebra moved away to some little thorn bushes where the sunlight fell all striped. And the giraffe moved off to some tallish trees where the shadows fell all blotchy. Now watch, said the zebra and the giraffe. This is the way it's done. One, two, three, and where's your breakfast? Leopard stared. And Ethiopian stared. But all they could see was stripy shadows and blotched shadows in the forest. But never a sign of zebra and giraffe. They had just walked off and hidden themselves in the shadowy forest. That's a trick worth learning. Take a lesson in it, leopard. You show up in this dark place like a bar of soap in a coal scuttle. Ho, 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 said the leopard. Would it surprise you very much to know that you show up in this dark place like a mustard plaster on a sack of coals? Well, calling names won't catch dinner, said the Ethiopian. The long and little of it is that we don't match our backgrounds. I'm going to take Bavian's advice. He told me I ought to change. And as I've nothing to change except my skin, I'm going to change that. What to? said the leopard, tremendously excited. To, uh, nice... Working blackish, brownish color with a little purple in it and touches of slaty blue. It would be the very thing for hiding in hollows and behind trees. So he changed his skin then and there, and the leopard was more excited than ever. He had never seen a man change his skin before. What about me? He said, when the Ethiopian had worked his last little finger into his fine new black skin. You take Bobby's advice too. He told you to go into spots. So I did, said the leopard. I, I went into other spots as fast as I could. I went into this spot with you, and a lot of good it has done me. Oh, said the Ethiopian. Bavian didn't mean spots in South Africa. He meant spots on your skin. 
What's the use of that? said the leopard. Think of giraffe, said the Ethiopian. Or if you prefer stripes, think of zebra. They find their spots and stripes give them perfect satisfaction. Mm, said the leopard. I wouldn't look like zebra not for ever so. Well, make up your mind, said the Ethiopian, because I'd hate to go hunting without you. But I must if you insist on looking like a sunflower against a tart fence. I'll take spots then, said the leopard. But don't make them too vulgar big. I wouldn't look like giraffe, not for ever so. I'll make them with the tips of my fingers, said the Ethiopian. There's plenty of black left on my skin still. Stand over. Then the Ethiopian put his five fingers close together. There was plenty of black left on his new skin still. And pressed them all over the leopard. And wherever the five fingers touched, they left five little black marks. All close together. You can see them on any leopard skin you like. Sometimes the fingers slipped and the marks got a little blurred. But if you look closely at any leopard, you will see that there are always five spots or five black fingertips. Now you are a beauty, said the Ethiopian. You can lie out on the bare ground and look like a heap of pebbles. You can lie out on a leafy branch and look like sunshine sifting through the leaves. <laughs> and you can lie right across the center path and look like nothing in particular. Think of that and purr. But if I'm all this, said the leopard, why didn't you go spotty too? Oh. Plain blocks best for a man, said the Ethiopian. Now, come along and we'll see if we can get even with Mr. One, Two, Three. Where's your practice? So they went away and lived happily ever afterwards. Best be that is all. Oh, now and then you will hear grown-ups say, Can the Ethiopian change his skin, the leopard his spots? I don't think even grown-ups would keep on saying such a silly thing if the leopard and the Ethiopian hadn't done it once. Do you? But they would never do it again. Best be They are quite content as they are. Oh, what's it all?